In this tutorial, I want to quickly go through a very nice way how we can summarize data using Microsoft Excel. Now, I'm working on a Mac, so if you're using the PC version, it might look a little bit different, but in principle, it is exactly the same. So here we've got an example. Let's say we have done an experiment. We, for example, measured the concentration of a biomarker in cells in the absence and in the presence of some drugs. And we want to summarize the data that we have collected. How can we do that? Now, the first thing that we really need to do is we need to identify what kind of data we actually have. Are these count data? Are these continuous data? Are these proportions or something like that? Because the data type really is absolutely essential to uh, find the right analysis method. Now, here we are probably measuring concentrations of this biomarker, uh, as indicated here in Micromolar, uh, the biomarker concentration. So we probably can assume that the data are of a continuous, continuous nature data look like they are continuous and therefore we uh, would use methods that are applicable to continuous data. So that is the first thing that we always need to make sure we are very clear what we are looking at. Now in Excel there is a very nice data analysis tool so if we go to data here and we can highlight the cells or at least one cell so data and we go to data analysis now you need to have the data analysis tool pack installed and uh, i leave a link in the description how you can do that if you have not done so so click on data analysis and in the uh, menu, you find something that is called descriptive statistics. Click OK. Now we need to tell the program where our data are located. So this is the input range. So I just keep the left mouse button clicked and select all cells. So this should be here. Select all cells. And we've got all the cells selected. Now you see there are some blank cells here, but it doesn't matter because the program is smart enough that it will omit these cell in these blank cells in the analysis. Now our data are grouped by columns. And we have labels in the first row. So we need to tick that box. We define an output. Where do we want the data? We'll just simply put them somewhere here. Let's put them here. And we want a summary statistics. That is what we want to achieve. We want to have this summary of the data. What do the data look like? And if we've done everything right, uh, then hopefully we'll get a result. Let's click OK. And yes, we do get some data here. So make that a little bit more visible. So what have we, make that a little bit larger as well. What have we got? So what we see is that the program gives us the output for the column without drug and with drug. And it calculates the mean. Uh, so we've got a mean, the average of 60, uh, 62.8375 for without drug and with drug, the mean would be 134.18. And 
this is an excellent uh, method. Now, we have said that these data are, our data set is continuous. What if it is not continuous? Well, if it is not continuous, if it is, for example, count data, where we, for example, uh, use colonies on a plate or something like that, we still can use this. We can use, for example, the mean. And I'm going to highlight what we can use for data that are not continuous. We can use the median and the mode. We see, for example, that uh, we have a mode for the data without drugs, but we don't have a mode for the data with drug, which just simply means that all our data are unique. What else can we use if the data are not continuous? We can use these data here if the data are not continuous. So the yellow highlighted data points can be used if the data are not continuous. However, you can use these data here that I'm going to highlight. Let's highlight them green. You can use these highlights, the green highlights, only for data that are indeed continuous. So only if you've got continuous data and I probably should uh, write this down, you can use only the green data. Let's write this down. The green data only for continuous data. And very importantly, the data must be derived from a normal distributed population and from normal distributed distributed population. This is particularly important for the standard error. If you don't have continuous data and these data are from normal distributed population, don't use the green bits of information, stick to the yellow ones. Now, of course, we can also graphically represent the data. And we can do that in, for example, a box and whisker plot. So how would we do that? So first of all, we need to highlight the cells. So highlight the cells. And on a, a Mac, what you need to do in order to get to the uh, plot, you would go to insert, but you don't see any option of box and a uh, whisker plot here. So what you do is in the menu bar, you go to insert chart, and that gives you all the charts that are available for that. And you find that there is a box and whisker plot here. So I've highlighted the cells and here we've got a nice box and whisker plot. Of course, you can make this a little bit nicer. You can label the axis. You can remove uh, this number here. So you can uh, say what uh, this here would be the biomarker concentration. And you would use text boxes to label what you've got here. So this is a nice box and whisker plot where you have the different 
quartiles, so you would have the first quartile, second, third and fourth quartile. That is basically what these sort of error bars indicate, but they are not error bars, they are actually the whiskers of the box plot. So that is how you can visualize the data. You also see that you've got uh, the line here. It's difficult to see with the dark blue, but with here, uh, the, this line, this would be the median, uh, which is slightly lower than the median, than, than the mean. Let's see if this is correct. Uh, so we have the mean 134 and the median 121. So the mean is slightly higher here. So there is a certain skew in it. And that is what the uh, box and whisker plot can actually tell you. These are not typical error bars. They are the limits of the quartiles. And that's very important. Uh, what you then would need to say in the description of this plot is what these uh, different things actually indicate. And here you would say blue box, for example, for the samples without drug. Here uh, the red one for samples with drug. So this is how you can do summary for continuous data. As I said, be very conscientious of the data type that you have. If you have count data, uh, then treat this uh, tool with a lot of respect and caution because some of the data are just simply not relevant. So for example, if you've got count data, the standard deviation, sample variance, uh, skewness and kurtosis will be calculated in a different way. So this only applies to continuous data. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.